Plaid for Plaid week here on That's Good Sports, which means I'm gonna go four for four on my picks. Don't even try to say it's an it's. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm Brandon. If Johnny Manziel isn't in the AAF in a week, I'm quitting AAF coverage, Perna. Johnny Manziel couldn't save the Browns, but maybe he can save the AAF after being released by the Montreal Alouettes. Oh, what? Johnny Manziel wasn't just released, he was banned from the CFL. What on earth could Johnny Manziel have done to get banned from the CFL? Getting banned from the Canadian Football League is like being denied a loyalty card at a grocery store. Sorry, sir, but the amount of donuts you buy on a weekly basis is considered suicide. Or denied admittance to community college. Or getting kicked out of the CF... Oh, right, that's where we started. Today, I'll break down the CF... AAF, whatever the hell I'm doing here. Week four predictions. That's good. That's, that's good sports. Go ahead. Subscribe. Also, this episode is sponsored by Form Fit Digital Scale and Body Analyzer from Vita Goods. Use my link in the description and the promo code BP60 for a 60% discount. That's $74.99 in savings. You may not know this about me, but I like to get in shape during the NFL offseason. That way I don't feel so crappy when I eat and drink too much during the stressful NFL season where I work 80 hour a week. So, this year I wanted to get something to monitor my body fat, muscle mass, and bone density in addition to my weight. The form fitting scale does all of that and it tells you your water weight. I've been using mine for a couple weeks now. It was really easy to set up. It allows you to program up to eight different profiles, which means the only person on earth who would need to buy two is Philip Rivers. Plus, UFC fighter and Broncos fan Holly Holm uses it. And no, she didn't threaten me for this endorsement. Again, the link in the description will get you the discount or my code BP60, form fit scale. Link, do it. Game one, we've got the San Diego Fleet versus the Memphis Express. This is tricky. I want to say I think the Express get their first win behind the arm talent of Zach Mettenberger. But I also think San Diego might be one of the best teams in the league. I don't trust San Diego quarterback Philip Nelson yet, but I think the fleet defense is legit and they may have the best rushing attack in the league. But the Express found a pretty damn good running back last week in Sherman Beatty to compliment Zach Stacy. Beatty runs hard. So hard that Beatty. Zach Mettenberger, is he actually any good? Or is he average but looked like a Hall of Famer? Bill Polian, can I run the AAF Hall of Fame, please? Shotgun, called it. But did he look like a Hall of Famer because Hackenberg set the bar so low? Are the Express the super hot girl who is in a shitty relationship with Hackenberg and will now fall in love and marry Mettenberger even though the hot girl, the Express, are way out of his league, but they're gonna settle just because he seems like a super boyfriend because he holds the door open and pays for dinner, but in reality, he's so boring, you'd rather die young than grow old with him. This metaphor is getting really out of hand, and I'm worried that it's gonna slip that I didn't have a girlfriend until after college. Like, way after college. If I'm dating a guy and he is the nicest guy on earth, and I can't break up with him. And I had my, you know, I had, you know, two really nice pieces of jewelry from him. Right. And I'm just gonna wait for him to leave me. Either way, Memphis still probably has the worst quarterback situation in the league until proven otherwise. The good news, uh, Memphis would be the best fit for Johnny Manziel, assuming he's not asking for a $20 million salary. The most important thing you need to understand though about San Diego is the fleet have uh, DeMontre Moore on the roster. His nickname, DeMonster. DeMonster leads the AAF in QB hits with nine. Pro Football Focus credits him with four sacks, which would tie him with Carter Schultz as the leader uh, in sacks, but the website noextrapoints.com says he only has two sacks. That's Good Sports says he has three sacks and nobody will take the time to prove me wrong, so we're gonna call it three. I'm gonna pick the Express to win in an upset since I know what the hell I'm talking about now after three weeks. Memphis probably wins on a field goal behind the newly added kicker Austin McGinnis. 
Yes, he does car bombs after every field goal. The undefeated Apollos versus the Salt Lake Stallions. This is the game of the week, in my humble opinion. Sure, the Apollos are undefeated, and the Stallions just won their very first game. But the Stallions should have beat the Iron two weeks ago and have looked dominant at the lines of scrimmage. The question here is, uh, how good is Salt Lake's secondary? Can they cover Charles Johnson and Jalen Marshall? Memphis did a pretty good job of that last weekend, especially considering they limited Garrett Gilbert to just 200 passing yards and zero Sarah Gilbert what's eating Gilbert grape or Gilbert Godfrey jokes here on That's Good Sports. That's impressive. Orlando uh, was able to hold on to their lead and the victory because they were able to run the ball effectively late. That's the best way to not get Mettenbergered, as they say. I mean, Ernest Johnson, Devon Smith, even Gilbert averaged over six yards per carry. If Trent Richardson had averaged six yards per carry, he'd have over 10,000 rushing yards in the AAF, probably. I doubt, though, that they can have that same success against the Stallions, who after giving up close to 150 on the ground week one to Arizona, allowed just 47 and 66 rushing yards the last two weeks. Plus, they're the only defense to contain Trent Richardson to just one rushing touchdown. That's pretty good. The one guy the Apollos defense needs to account for is slot receiver DeMorne Pearson L, which might be the greatest name in human history. DeMorne Pearson L, which translates to of Mornay Pearson the. It starts in France, but ends in Mexico. Like when you go and order a large French fry from McDonald's on your way to Chipotle, to create the perfect meal. It's like if Samuel Day Champlain's ship crashed into El Chapo outside of New France, Mexico, and the explosion built the perfect slot receiver in De Mornay Pearson L. He also caught all eight of his targets last week for 90 yards and a touchdown. And one thing the AAF has been missing is a slot receiver. In fact, he and Kenny Bell were both perfect in the receiving game. The Apollos do have solid corners though, and Cody Riggs and Keith Reeser, who PFF has rated as the best corner in the league through the first three weeks of the season, with Riggs close behind at number three. Since they both play for the Apollos, I think it's safe to call that cornerback tandem the baby no-fly zone, or the shitty no-fly zone. Something demeaning to remind them that they're not in the NFL. But I'm all about the upsets this week, and so I think the Stallions get a W. San Antonio Commanders at Birmingham Iron. The Iron are hot. The Commanders are not. The Iron improve. <laughs> and as they say, the Iron is hot. The Commanders are not. Oh, <laughs> they say that. The Iron improved to 3-0 last week and are starting to look like the most complete team in the AAF. I know that's like saying they're the tallest little person or the best picture in 2018, but it's good for the sport to have a team that's pulling ahead of the pack. Despite the fact that uh, his team is 3-0, quarterback Luis Perez has yet to throw a touchdown pass in, in ever, which basically makes him the Julio Jones of quarterbacks, fitting for an Alabama football player. One reason though that that's still the case is Trent Richardson has six touchdowns on the ground already, even though he's only rushed for 145 yards on 59 carries. He's the ultimate goal line back, the AAF's version of Jerome Bettis' version of Tom Brady on fourth and one. Richardson scores one touchdown for every 24 rushing yards. If he turns into a thousand yard rusher, that's 41 touchdowns this season. According to Deadspin, uh, Charlie Ebersol, co-founder of the Alliance of American Football, is being sued by LA businessman Robert Vanich, who said the league was actually his idea, and that Ebersol eventually froze him out from getting an ownership stake in the league. That sounds shady and probably true, but my only question here is, how do you invent something that's already been invented? Uh, yeah, let's do the NFL, but like in the fall. My idea, now I'm suing you, dick. That's like my lawsuit suing the California burrito because I've been putting my McDonald's french fries in my Chipotle burritos for years. I discuss it more, but I've been advised by my lawyer to stop. Stop with the lawsuit and stop eating my meal that I concocted. Just like the San Antonio Commanders have been advised to stop competing after their impressive week one win. The Iron will beat the Legends and remain the only undefeated team by the end of Sunday. And Luis Perez will finally throw a fucking touchdown pass. 
In the final game, the Atlanta Legends at the Arizona Hot Shots. This is the matchup the Hot Shots desperately need to get back on track. Last week, Arizona lost their rematch with the Salt Lake Stallions uh, at the first game in Utah. They still have quarterback John Wolford, who has the best touchdown to interception ratio in the league at seven to three. You might think that's worse than Garrett Gilbert's five touchdowns to zero interception ratio, but if you remember math class, when you ratio anything by zero, you get pi. Tom Brady says you can't eat pi and be a good quarterback. Matthew Stafford says, I was a better quarterback when I ate pie. And Ben Roethlisberger says, you can have your pie and fuck it too. Wolford may be out with a back injury. I have no clue because there's no goddamn injury report for the AAF that I can find. Wolford's got the uh, second best yards per attempt behind only Garrett Gilbert. It feels like Wolford uh, has a shot to win the first AAF MVP, which I assume is a thing they're gonna do, but with such a short schedule, you don't get second and third chances to get your team back on track. Like, if you don't have your shit together after week three, you're pretty much screwed in the AAF, I think. Fans of Atlanta Legends, yes, all 12 of them are upset that the team hasn't played former Georgia quarterback Aaron Murray yet, which makes sense. The team is 0-3, the non-lefty Sims son is completing less than 60% of his passes and has six interceptions. During the last game, fans were chanting, we want Murray, we want Murray, and even came to the stadium with signs that said, you guessed it, we want Murray, we want Murray. You guys realize you're not getting Kyler Murray, right? <laughs> this Murray is white, got cut from the Chiefs, and is about a foot taller. The only team that should be chanting, we want Murray, is the Oakland A's. Honestly though, I think the, the, the legends are so bad right now that John Wolford playing lying down on a stretcher all game might be better than Matt Sims. Definitely better than Christian Hackenberg at this point, but I don't, I don't want to kick a man while he's down. The legends as an organization are a mess, and if Trevor Knight plays in place of Wolford, I think the hot shots are just gonna run the ball down Atlanta's legendary throats. Legendary throats sounds sexual, but it's not. Throw in Trevor Knight at quarterback with running backs Tim Cook, Jarrell Presley, and Justin Stockton, guys who have all shined at different points this season, and I think they win this game with over 200 yards on the ground and one six-yard touchdown pass to Rashad Ross. Trevor Knight will finish one-for-one one passing with a touchdown like he's Julian Edelman and 88 rushing yards. Those are your week four AAF predictions. Again, check out the AFB subreddit if you're looking for Alliance uh, info. Wait, hold on. Breaking, this is breaking. John Wolford is fine. I told you he was faking last week. Anybody who's actually had a back injury would not be out there throwing footballs like this right now, but glad to see he's healthy. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. You don't have a reason not to. Uh, give my friend at WillKey6 a follow on Twitter. He helps me write all of this bullshit. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. And of course, there are more football videos on this channel if you've got time to kill. You have time to kill. What are you doing with your life? Probably more than me. Fuck.